Good morning. The lights have come on. The sun has come out. Good to see you. Welcome. Delighted that, that you're here, First Presbyterian, and for worship at nine. And if you're going to be watching online, we're glad you're tuning in uh, and watching this. Uh, we can't wait till we're all back here in person. And uh, we encourage you to do, to do that, uh, to get back. As we have it all spaced out, everything's okay, but you do what's comfortable. As I say, you're more uh, than welcome to join us for worship here this morning. We're going to start with Holy is the Lord. Um, big welcome to anybody who's visiting today um, and here for the first time. Uh, we're, we're delighted. I have a couple of new friends here, and it's good to see them, and uh, we're, we're delighted at that. So I know it's very hard to do any sort of fellowship -y, how you doing sort of thing. So uh, all we're going to do is just turn around and give a wave to everybody so that they know that you actually know they're here. Um, yep, and you don't know who beh who's behind the mask, but... Uh, it's the usual suspects, usually. So, we want you to feel relaxed. Please um, stand when you want to stand. Sit when you want to sit. Um, I was going to say fall asleep when you need to fall asleep. Um, but just feel relaxed and, and comfortable. We're going to worship our Lord. Uh, we're excited to be here. And uh, let's stand. This is holy as the Lord.
one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. It's not these giant leaps, just steps. These major things have been happening in my life, these decisions that have to be made. It's never obvious. Every decision takes faith. And I can't see miles ahead, but I know where to take my next step. That's how it is with God sometimes. It's like following him even if I don't know where he's going. But it's okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't have to have it all figured out, as long as he does. That's done again, how can it be?
light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We are separated. We are isolated. And in this world, we have trouble. Nonetheless, we take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. We are conflicted and frustrated, weary too. But nonetheless, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. We are down but not out, sidelined but still in the game. We fight for our families, we hold on to love, we strive for kindness, but the hard times get harder. Nonetheless, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. We walk through adversity. We are sons and daughters of the Most High. We know to whom we belong and we know where our hope lies. For he is the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega, the one who is and the one who is to come. It looks bleak, they say it's grim, there's a lot to fear, but nonetheless, we are strong. We are courageous. We are the church. Let me read to you today from Luke uh, chapter 12. The, the, the whole text is 22 to 30. We're just going to focus um, mainly on verses 22 and 23, and this is what it says. Then Jesus said to the disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you, can, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things. And your Father God knows that you need them. That last video, great video, um, just spelling out how we actually live our lives, so much in worry, so much in fear. And let's not sugarcoat this. All of us have worries, right? All of us have troubles. All of us will feel weary. We'll have our ups and downs, but we follow a God who is constant, who is at our side 24-7. We are the church. We're supposed to be strong and courageous because we have Jesus on our side. How many of you would say, we're going to do a show of hands. You're not going to be seen, all right? The, the, the cameras don't pick, pick you up. Uh, they have to look at me all the time, so. How many of you would say that you're a worrier? Let's have a show. Okay, quite a few. I think we're all worriers to a certain extent, aren't we? It depends how, how you, you phrase that. Now, I don't mean just the odd worry, because we'll all worry about something. But I want you to think about, are you the type of person, or who do you know that's always worrying about every little thing and every little detail? Anybody know anybody like that? Okay, you're not supposed to point at your mom. All right. But that's okay. Moms are allowed to worry. Isn't that right? 
Uh, but sometimes we worry too much. Did you know, here's a bit of statistics for you. Today, over 40 million U.S. adults have an anxiety order and worry. Over 40 million in America adults have an anxiety disorder and worry. Wow. And 25% of young people between the ages of 13 and 18 are also affected. Startling, isn't it? Worry is a major issue, and it sucks the life out of everybody that's consumed by it. And no one wants to suffer like this. And God's saying, there, you don't need to suffer this way. You need just to lay everything with me. Look at the birds. Look at the grass. Look at all the things that I've created, and I look after them. Today's passage tells us we aren't to worry about life because our Heavenly Father knows what we need. Knows what we need. Even before we know what we need, God knows what we need. The word worry cannot be found in God's vocabulary. It's not there. If God has a dictionary, worry isn't in it, okay? It isn't there. It doesn't exist. And most of us actually, if you think about it, we worry about things that never ever happen. Not right? We worry about stuff that we think will happen but never happens and we get so uptight and we get, yeah, we just get stressed out. And yet it usually doesn't happen. It's crazy to get caught up in all this stuff when we have no need to. We want to be in the driving seat of our lives, don't we? We want to be in control. Instead of slipping over into the passenger side and letting God have the wheel. Letting God have control of what's going on. Worry has a stifling effect on us. We worry about tomorrow. Okay, does anybody worry about tomorrow? Anybody thinking what you have to do tomorrow when you go to work? All, all, all our students, anybody that, that's now at home, the big worry is what time do I have to get up at? Has mom left a list that I have to get up early or can get, you know? So worries are very different, but we all worry. We worry about tomorrow instead of living for today. So many people see life slip past them because they're worried about what's gonna happen in the future and forget what's actually happening in the here and now. We worry, of course, about our health. We worry about security. We worry about family. And yet in the midst of all of this, God tells us, take a breath. Trust me. God's looking for us to take a breath, which in this day and age is really difficult, isn't it? Once we get the, these here on, it's hard to take breaths. When I take breaths with these here, when I go out and um, you go into a store and you put your mask on and you go in and then you go, go to see what the price is of something, or you go to look at something and you lean forward and next thing my glasses are all steamed up. I need somebody, and Jennifer won't do this. She doesn't walk alongside wiping my glasses. She just tells me to get on with it. Suck it up. Get on with it. That, that, that's the way things are. We... We, we need, need to take a breath and we need just to stop and we just need to let God be God in the midst of all this because we're not in control of it. I think everybody has realized that. The world has come to realization, I do believe, that they're not in control of anything. No matter how much, um, you, you know, countries where there's dictators who, who actually tell people you can't do, they can't, they're not in control of their country. This has changed the whole landscape of everything. We have come to a stage where we realize all these things are out of our control. We often think we have the greatest minds and we have, you know, we're still struggling to find a vaccine. With all the greatest minds in the world going about this. You see, God's the one who's in control. God's the one who has our back. God's the one who's going to stand beside us. And God wants us to rest 
in him rather than get worried and stressed out. So I want to ask you, think about this. The longer your worry list is, if you've got a, a, you know, if you've got a worry list, I think if we're really honest, a lot of us have. But the longer your worry list is, the smaller your faith is in God. Think about that. If we live our lives worry, 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 then where's our faith in the big God that we have? The big God who takes care of everything. The big God who looks after us, who walks beside us, who has a hand on his shoulder. You see, God has never been isolated from us. God doesn't need, need to do elbow bumps with us or waves at us because he's there with us constantly. We need to break free of the fear and anxiety because as I said earlier, worry is not on God's vocabulary. It has no biblical foundation. Consider the ravens, it said in verse 24. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than the birds? You see, I think we have lost our sense of value to God because we live in this world that tells us you're only of value when you're a success. What is a success? In God's eyes, every one of us are successes because he loves us as we are. And we have lost this sense of how valuable we are to the creator, God. He's your father. We forget that. We forget that we are valuable. It's, start, it's time to start believing in the promises of God just like a child believes in things. Listen to what it says, and this is the message version of Philippians 4, and verses 6 and 7. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. You see, flipping this from, from me being able to deal with this to God, here's what I'm worried about, please take it, changes the whole landscape of how we live. Before you know it, there's a sense of wholeness coming from our prayers. The great discovery that I made in my life was that my God hears my prayers. My God delivers. My God protects me. So why on earth would I ever live my life shackled with worry? When God's going to take care of everything, why do I live my life shackled, tied up? Nearly sometimes we feel we're in a straitjacket that we can't get out of because we are so consumed with worry. Corrie ten Boom, who survived the Nazi concentration camps, had this to say. Worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow, but it empties today of its strength. God doesn't want us and doesn't want you living your life looking over your shoulder. We need to look to Jesus. Francis Chan said in his message, um, when you're running towards Christ, you are freed to serve, love, and give thanks without guilt, worry, or fear. Because as long as you are running, you're safe. If you're running towards God, we're safe. If everything is God's in front of us and we're running towards him, our life is completely different. Our outlook is completely different because we're focused on where we're going, where Christ is directing us. There is safety and security and hope when we're running towards Jesus because our destiny lies in him. So what I want to ask you this morning is, 
Are you ready to stop worrying? Are you ready to stop worrying? Most of us are going to go, I would love to, but I can't. That's not the way God intended us to live. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 says, steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about that, about what may happen or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. God gives us the strength if we steep our life in God. We are so consumed in negativity that we find ourselves drowning in mixed messages all over the place. From people who put their own slant on things, on reality. And the world's reality is not God's reality. The world's reality has nothing to do with God's reality. We forget too easily that God has a plan and that he will need and meet our needs. That's what he longs to do. Jesus is our one and only hope. He is the cure for our worry. There is no vaccine needed to be created for God to cure our worry. We just need Jesus in our lives. Jesus just doesn't give you what you need. He gives us far, far more than what we actually need. We live today in a city and in a world where people need to know that Jesus will meet their needs. Often it's when you haven't enough left that you discover that God is enough. It's where, when, when we're at, that, at the edge of a cliff and there's nowhere else to go and then we realize that God is there for us. God is there for protecting us. God is there looking after us. I read this quote about that the eagle soars in the upper air and doesn't worry itself about how to get across the rivers. It sits perched on the edge of a canyon. Just imagine it, one of those beautiful big eagles perched on the edge of a canyon and then it casts itself down into the abyss. It just throws itself off the edge of that cliff and with wings outstretched, its wings outstretched, it's not flapping. It just puts its wings out, they're outstretched, and they find the warm updraft from the depths below. And the, the eagle uses that updraft to circle and to soar, and it rises far above the canyon's rim. In the Old Testament, Isaiah says that those who trust in the Lord will soar on eagles' wings. They will soar on eagles' wings. When, when, when we just cast ourselves onto God, onto his Holy Spirit, when, when we find that wave of the Holy Spirit to lift us and to hold us, and we just rest like the eagle, the eagle stretches its wings and it soars because it's using the power of the updraft. We need to soar by using the power of God's Holy Spirit. We need to catch that wave of the Holy Spirit and that blowing of the Holy Spirit to help us to soar in our lives. I hope and pray that we may be Christians who are not known for our frantic flapping. There are so many people today who are flapping. They're floundering. I hope we're not going to be known for frantic flapping, but for casting ourselves into the unknown and soaring upward on the wings of God's Holy Spirit. 
See, that has to be the hope for our church. When we just fall into the arms of God and let him take control, when we find what the Spirit is saying and just laying ourselves on that and letting God help us to rise and to soar, we don't do it in any of our strength, with any energy, that that doesn't work. I know what I'm talking about because I have done frantic flopping in my life. I've done frantic flopping. I can sort it out. I know what I can do. I can make this happen. I use all my own strength and all my own energy, and I can get this done. And I find that to be really stupid because it doesn't work. I had to throw myself into the arms of my Savior and have faith in Him. To have faith in Him. And when I did that, I found that the beautiful, powerful updrafts of His Holy Spirit lifted me higher and higher and higher. You see, we trust in so many things, don't we, for direction. But we doubt God. We worry that God doesn't know what he's doing. How silly can we, we get? Just think about this. If, I'm, if we're going somewhere and we don't know where we're going, which for Jennifer and I is quite often, if we get outside the city limits, we're really struggling. But you know what, what, what we do? And we all do this. We take our phones and we go to Google Maps. And we tell Google Maps where we want to go and it pops up and this lovely lady will direct us and take us and talk to us the whole way through to get us to our destination. Never once did I doubt that she is going to take me to my destination. It's a phone. It's a computer with a woman's voice telling me where to go, and I never doubt it. This person is going to get me to where I need to go. Now, there's a couple of times if we haven't updated things, I do end up in front of a brick wall somewhere because that road no longer exists. And I think, has the sound gone out? No? Okay, it's, it's, go, it's gone out there. So, why do I trust this more than I trust God? Why do we do, we do that? If we want information about something that we don't know, we don't even have to study much now for it. We Google it. Google will tell us what the answer is. And once we see that answer in front of us, the worries go away. Wow, I've got the answer. How clever am I? Never again do I doubt that Google is giving me the wrong information. So my friends, why, why, why is God's church not being more reliant and have more faith and have more trust in what God says and the direction that he's leading us? Probably because he's leading us in a direction that some of us don't want to go. We want to stay the way we are. We want to do the things that we have always done. We all long for those times, but those times are gone. We will not be doing the same things because things are different. And we worry about what that's going to look like, and God is just shaking his head, I imagine, up there and going, why, 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 why do you worry? Leave it with me. I have got this sorted. Trust. Trust me. So, as we finish, are you ready this morning to leap? To leap off the edge, to leave worry behind, and to soar with God, to soar with the Holy Spirit. Today I want to encourage you, and if we could do this, it would be wonderful, because you know I would do it, but we can't at the moment. I'd love you all to take hands and we'll all jump together. It'd be great. We could all, no, we couldn't. I was going to say, we could all go up to the balcony and we'd all jump off. But that wouldn't be good. Sure, it wouldn't, David? No.
But you know what I mean? We could all jump together into this and say, okay, God, we're just going to put everything in your hands, in your loving arms. Let's trust. Let's get rid of this worry. And let's come closer to God. Will you pray with me? Let's just bow our heads. Dear Father, we, we have to admit that we often forget that you're with us. We even forget what you're like. Sometimes it seems like we take our worries everywhere except to you. We hear people say, God's got this. But how often do we live like we actually believe that? Philippians 4 and 6 tells us, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Lord, please forgive us for being doubtful. Today we need you, and we need to get to know you better. We need to get to know your word and your promises better. Help each of us to put you first in every area of our lives. Help us to live one day at a time. Oh, help us not to worry about tomorrow, but instead focus on what you're doing in our lives right now. We want to trust in your promise to take care of every one of our needs, financial, relational, physical, social, spiritual, and emotional. Help us to trust you more and worry less. We know you hear us, Lord, when we bring our concerns to you. You care about what is going on in each of our lives. And we know you want to give us clear and sound minds, free from worry, free from anxiety. Forgive us when we allow anxious thoughts to cloud our thinking. Help us to take our anxieties to you in every circumstance, believing you will intervene and work out your eternal purpose for us. So give us thankful hearts. Give us hearts that say, I am grateful for your loving kindness to me. Father, I know you will work out your plans for my growth others good and for your glory let us join this morning in the Lord's prayer our father who art in heaven thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread Give us our trespasses as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now just in the stillness as David plays, I want you to take a moment and let the worries go. I want you to do that on your own. With your eyes closed, just talk to God. Tell him what needs to change. Tell him what he needs to take. And then believe that he will take it.
have them in your house. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Our Savior and Lord. Okay, let's stand. This is called Everlasting God. just pray. Lord, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a God who takes all worries and, and just dismisses them. Because worry doesn't exist with you. 
and it shouldn't exist and overwhelm us. So let us walk free from here this morning in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work for you, knowing that you have our today and you have our tomorrow and we have that promise from you. So set us free to live the way you want us to live and let us bring glory to your name. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As you leave this morning, we, we have our boxes for offerings. Please encourage people that you know are thinking, should I come back to church? We're back. We can't be church until everybody's back in church because you are the church. See you next week. Have a great week.